to someone who can sing very well, and is a wonderful singer, and then he or she have a special gift for the beautiful boys to sing together, sing, sing some, someone else. If I give to her or him, okay, I'm going to give $1,000, don't sing anymore. Then what, what are you going to, he or she said, no way. Or maybe she said, million more dollars, somebody said it. What about famous painter? Oh, I'm going to give you $1,000 to stop painting. No. What about someone else to come to me as a pastor to me and then say, Oh, pastor, if you stop the preaching, I'm going to give you $1,000. What are you going to say there? Yay. <laughs> you know what? Gift. God give you special gift, but you never lose that gift by even money or by anything else. Jeremiah chapter 29 said, Then I say, I will not make mention of Jesus Christ. I will not make mention of God my Father. What is that? Nor speak anymore in His name. But His word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back. And I could not. You know what that means? This gift from God is more valuable than money or anything else. God gives you special gift to build the kingdom of God. For the church, we are the church. What if God asks you, oh, you are you now a carpenter. You build a church now together. Okay? Then God didn't give you anything. God give you anything, something like a hammer or saw or measure or whatever God want to give you. And God make us build together His church, His kingdom of God. So every single one got a gift, different gift. Maybe if you have no special skill, God give you glove. Okay, take care of garbage. Good job. We all have special gift. You know, today, the Bible words and seven gifts show us. But when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, how many gifts are there? Nine gifts. Seven gifts in Romans, Apostle Paul mentioned. And to the 1 Corinthians, the Corinthian church, and nine gifts talking about. So we are talking about seven gifts one by one today of a prophecy. So we're going to read together. Go. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is a professing, let him use it in proportion to his faith. Amen. To build a church, not this building church, we are. We need prophecy. God knows that. Then what is prophecy? You know, our, our thought, our idea, and our philosophy is based on world. What is the prophecy in the world? Fortune teller or palm leader. That is prophecy we think about. Only, only future things. Yes, prophecy talk about future things too. In the Bible, what is in the Bible? Prophecy is not talking about your personal future. This all prophecy is about community, future. I will keep telling. Just as what if someone came, came to you? Think about it. Someone came to you and said, Oh, God, give me prophecy. And God said to you, you should marry me. What? I'm already married with someone else. No, you should divorce and marry me again. <laughs> then do you think that prophecy is good? Yeah. No. We should discern. Some pastor, famous pastor, some prophecy woman and came to him and said, Pastor, you know what? Your wife will die pretty soon. He crying over and over. For 
almost 20, 30 years she lives. We should discern. You know, false prophet use someone else's mind and get a money or any benefits. So what is the Bible said? They, they just thought and or dreamed and whatever they think, oh, this is my God. Okay, you will die. Oh, you should marry. You will be blessed. They just say that. Then what does the Bible say? It's gear chapter 13, 3. Thus say the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. We are so deceived by someone else, like this first prophet. Why? Because we confuse. What professing is like a fortune tellings. No, so different. You know, the gift of prophecy is not for personal, it's for the build a church. We keep talking about the communion, right? Com community, church, church. So 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who professes edifies what? The church. It's not a palm reading. If it is no use that profess for the church and, and make church a, a, a separation, that prophecy is definitely forced prophecy. Gift. What is the, the purpose of gift? What is the goal of the gift of God? For blessing one another. To edify the church one another. This, this church is the body of Jesus Christ. What is the goal for the prophecy? Give the glory of God. Yes, definitely prophecy contains the future things. In Greek language, prophecy is pro petean, meaning is tell ahead of future. But in the Bible and in the in the Old Testament, prophecy is Nabi, Roe, Jose, meaning is see, foreseer, what they see. Whatever God say to them, they see and they tell about future things. And in the Old Testament, do you know how many prophecies in prophet story, the prophet is, uh, prophecy in the, in the Old Testament? More than 300 prophecies. More than 300 prophecies all focus on Messiah. Think about it. All the prophecy is talking about Jesus Christ? Yes. But when we talk about prophecy is, do you think I'm going to get a that job? Or do you think I'm better? Do you think I'm get well? Do you, th do you think I'm going to marry with him or her? No, that is not prophecy. It's all the prophecy in the Bible said about what? Jesus Christ. Even Apostle Paul talked about when he wrote down Romans. Romans chapter um, 1 verse 2, the gospel, he prom uh, promised beforehand through his prophet in the Holy Scriptures regarding what? His son who as to his human nature was a descendant of David. You know, even Apostle Paul know about what is a prophecy. How the prophet talk about whom? Jesus Christ. Even Jesus himself, when he resurrected after his sacrifice on the cross, he talked about the future things. He talked about prophecy in the Bible to his disciples very clearly. Luke chapter 24, 25, Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and a slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. What is that? What is the prophet spoke? There is the prophecy. I want to know that there is prophecy. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 
this is all about. And verse 27, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, Jesus Christ. You know, even Jesus said that all the Bible prophecy talk about me. Not talk about your future things like uh, fortune tellers. No. So sometimes we mix up with a, when we heard the prophecy. Okay, if I have prophecy, it, it will be good. I, I, can, I can go this way, God tell me. No, that is not the prophecy. The Bible talk about that. Even apostles and disciples, when they heard prophecy. Oh, that is? In the, all the Old Testament, more than 300 prophecies talk about Jesus Christ, Messiah. They always talk about Jesus Christ. When you read the Bible, they always talk about Jesus Christ. Because all the fulfillment of prophecy is written Bible. So someone say to you, in the name of Jesus, or in the name of God, and that the prophecy is not fulfilled once or twice, don't believe them, don't afraid them. Because what is the Bible said? Deuteronomy chapter 18, 22. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message to message the Lord has not spoken. It's not coming true. That is not prophecy. That prophet had spoken pre Sumptuously, do not be afraid of him. Think about it. Even though they come to you spiritually, they look spiritually, say to you, and they use the name of Jesus Christ, and that word is not fulfilled, that is not from God. So prophecy talk about Jesus Christ. We know that. So when you have that gift of prophecy, talking about Jesus Christ, and edify the church, that prophecy, then how, how we use that, that is today's word. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. Let him use it in proportion to his faith. What is a faith? Faith always connects with money? No. Connect to whom? Jesus Christ. That your faith is good and great? What do you mean by that? My faith is good. My faith is big. What does it mean by that? Your faith connects to Jesus Christ, I fully believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and He lead my life. He reign over my life, 100%. Wow, your faith is really good, big. But you believe in Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, but just a little. Yeah, maybe. It's like insurance. If I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, we know that we have many funerals, and one day we'll die. But I know that this is kind of insurance if I believe in Lord Jesus Christ and when I die, I'm going to heaven. I, I know that if you believe that, you're going to heaven. But uh, Jesus said that, a little faith. Think about it. That is faith. So according to your measure of faith, meaning your standard is Jesus Christ should be. How much you rely on Jesus Christ? Your proportion to your faith is belong to that. You know what that means? When you do prophecy for the church and for the kingdom of God, that should be based on Jesus Christ, not over there. If that is not over the word of God, that is not prophecy. Because all the standard of your prophecy should be the word of God. How do you know that? 
2 Peter chapter 120, above all, you must, what is that? You must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. No, not by human being. Then what? For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but man spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy, Holy Spirit. What is that? Prophecy of Scripture. All the Bible is written by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit want to tell you through this Bible 100% about Jesus Christ, your salvation. If over or if out of this Bible, you should discern that is not prophecy. If someone came to you, oh, I have a spirit of eagle tell you. You should meet someone else. Don't listen to them. God is the Bible. In the Bible, Holy Spirit tells you. And Jesus Christ tells you. You know, all the prophecies and our, our standing ground in Jesus Christ. And everything in Jesus Christ. So Ephesians chapter 2, 20, this is very important word. We should know that. Our church is on the ground of what? Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yes. They all talk about Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We stand in this foundation, in this prophecy. In this word about Jesus Christ, this is very important. And God already told you, well, full, 100% enough prophecy and revelation. If you're looking for other revelations, that is not Jesus Christ. If God thinks you need that, God will write more Bible, but not 66 Bible is more than good enough to get a salvation because God talk about Jesus Christ through this Bible. This is very important. You know, prophecy, sometimes it shows us future things, but actually it's present. If you do not repent, you will be judged in hell forever. That is future things. Why Bible talk about this? This prophecy is about future. If you not repent, if you not come to Jesus Christ, you will, you will die forever. Future things. Why? What is the purpose of this prophecy? This present, now, we need to repent and go to heaven. Think about it. King David, he killed his own servant, Raya. And he take his wife as his wife, Basava. During the one year until the, the Basava have a baby, one year, he didn't repent to God. He didn't. Because he thought it's okay. This sin, he didn't think that is sin. He never repent before God. He think that is, that is not evil. And God sent Nathan, prophet Nathan, Nathan, what is Nathan or Nathan? In the, in the Hebrew language, Nathan. So he, Nathan came to David and said that, Oh, king, I, I have a sad story I tell you. What is that? There are just one rich man and one poor man lives, neighbors. One rich man, he has a lot of, lot of sheep and cattle and so many donkeys. But this little poor man has one little lamb. He takes care of this one little lamb like his own daughter. One day, the rich man has visitors, guests. 
the, the culture of their culture is when they have a, the visitors that they kill uh, the lamb and then provide from, uh, prepare some dinner for the guest. But rich man didn't kill his own among the loss of a herd and, and the ship. He killed his own, just one only little tiny little lamb of a neighbor's poor lamb and then provide the dinner for his own guest. When King David heard this story, with his anger, he couldn't stand. How, how could he do that? He should be die. He should be die. He's a really bad man. And Second Samuel 12, 5, David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He's so angry. And what is Nathan said? That's you. If he didn't talk about this uh, parable, maybe it come to him, King David, you are sinner, repent. Maybe king, kill him. But he talked about parable. Think about it. What is Nathan's job? Prophet. He did prophecy? No. He did talk about future things? No. He let him know his own sinner. If you do not repent, you will die. You will die. Yeah, future things. But real talk about now you should repent. You know, prophecy talk about future things. The real goal is present now. We should walk with Jesus Christ. Or your life will be so miserable. You know, this prophecy is talk about the word of God. The word itself is logos in Jesus Christ. The when Jesus come this world... When he talk about kingdom of God, do you think they believe that? No, they don't believe. They crucify, crucify Jesus Christ. They never heard the word of God from Jesus Christ at all. A miracle. They try to kill Jesus. Even though Jesus talked about kingdom of God. But very interesting happened. After he died on the cross and resurrected, and he sent to heaven and he sent... Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of truth. And now we understand what the Bible says that. Is that truth? Yes. Should I believe in Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, such, such a wretch like me? Yes, you can. You know, Holy Spirit wisdom of the Holy Spirit and let us understand and enlighten our heart and understand what Bible say that. That is a miracle. And more miracles when you speak to all the prophecy in the Bible to someone else by Holy Spirit, they believe that. When Jesus talk about this truth, they kill Jesus. Even, even nowadays, they kill Christians. But they believe that. Then Jesus said to that. John 14, 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father. And after he sent the Holy Spirit to you. You know, when you read this, oh, I can do the better job than Jesus Christ. I can make people live. Yes, you can do that by the name of Jesus Christ. I can walk on the water. Wow. Maybe I, maybe I can fly because he will do even greater things than this. Wonderful. But that is not that. Whole Bible talk about the word. And the word is self Jesus Christ. The word is God. And God come to us. God came to us, the, the Jesus Christ, as a Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ come to you and talk about the God's word. They don't believe that. 
because they have no Holy Spirit. But after Jesus accomplished sacrifice and resurrection, He sent Holy Spirit to us. Then we have Holy Spirit and understand what God said to you. This is amazing. And when you share the God's word to someone else, the prophecy word to someone else, they start to believe. Amazing. The greater than Jesus did. Because they, at the time, they have no Holy Spirit working there. Flesh body cannot accept the Holy Word. Only Holy Spirit helps you and be with you, abide in you. And the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom and then let you understand because this Word is breathed by the Holy Spirit. This written by Holy Spirit, the, the writer talk about this. And one by one, you understand, wow, this is the meaning. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, the Numbers, and Deuteronomy, one by Joshua, one by one. This all the Bible talk about Jesus Christ. And when opposed Paul and opposed Peter and opposed James, and they they know about all kind of these prophets. Finally, they knew that this all the prophets talk about Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Fortune teller talk about just your just the tiny future things even devil can do. Okay, you, you know your future. Good things. You will die after 20 years later. Good things, you know that. Is that really good? But this prophet, this prophet talk about you live forever when you're in Jesus Christ. You can live forever, your Holy Father God forever. This is all the gospel talk about. Real good things. Not about you can get a job or not. I can divorce my wife or not. Is that all you want to know? Is that all? So you spend your spirit to the devil? That's so sad. You know, read the Bible. This whole Bible talk about the blessings. Who is the blessing? Jesus Christ. When you know him more and more, you, you're getting close to him. Because this is spiritual things. This is the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. So when you have gift of a prophecy, share the word. Let other people live. And church community will be healthy growth together by the word of God. Amen? Father, thank you for your glory in this morning. Father, I know that you spoke to your children about prophecy. The whole Bible talk about prophecy, about Jesus Christ. This is true blessings. But people looking for strange things and they mix up with the real prophecy about Jesus Christ with the with devil's prophecy. Father God, bless us discern what is real prophecy in our life. And we want to focus on our Lord Jesus Christ and fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord, through this Bible, we know that our future will live forever in the kingdom of God, forever with our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, no, that is your prophecy to us. Thank you, Father. Bless all the church family and let us share your prophecy about Jesus Christ to other people. Then finally, we know that greater things we can do by Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for your being with us today. Thank you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of Father God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Everyone says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.